you're listening to the Drawing the Ideal Self podcast for February 2022. Today's podcast is an interview with Ian Gilman-Smith, who is both a psychotherapist and a social worker. And I do know that some of the audience are social workers and may be wondering about how you can use more PCP in your work. So you might find this episode very interesting. Hi, Ian. In terms of what you do, can you tell us a bit about your career and how you've got to this point? Yeah, uh, I mean, I've got lots to say, I suppose, really. But um, I started life um, probably over 30 years ago. I try not to sort of count the years. And I trained up as a social worker and I, I found myself drawn to specialising in mental health right from the start in terms of, wow. of training. Um uh, and I, I think what attracted me the most actually were, was the sense that in terms of mental health, there is no one explanation as to why someone is presenting in a particular way or, or experiencing mental distress. So obviously there's the, the, the medical biological model of, of, of mental illness, but obviously there's a, the, the psychological and the social model as well. And so social work was very much tapping into the, the, the social and, and the psychological aspects. Um, and, and so my training and I'd like to think the training still exists in this sort of way. It was very much sort of psycho- psychological as well yeah. in terms of sort of thinking about mental distress. Okay. And so, and so actually, we we had some talks from um, individuals uh, in mental health services um, who were part of the crisis service or a crisis psychiatric crisis service. Yeah. And and I found that really interesting because um, the whole idea of cr- of crisis theory is that you're you're mobilizing that individual and their family within the crisis to yeah. to use that as an experiential and, and, and learning sort of perspective to try and find their, their their own resources in addition to professional resources and family resources to find their way out of that crisis and I, I, that, I was really sort of taken with that and um, it's almost so long ago I almost can't quite remember but I'm, I know we, we had information or, or, or lectures about Kelly uh, and, oh. and yeah, yeah, this is at the London School of Economics uh, and, and Personal Construct Psychology. Um, and, and that really took my interest too. So uh, cutting out all the other sort of career bits and pieces I did uh, after that, I, I found myself fairly soon after qualifying um, as part of the Barnet Crisis Intervention Service uh, yeah. as a social worker. And that's where you'd be on call, um, including out of hours, uh, and you'd go out with a psychiatric nurse and a psychiatrist. And you'd yeah. assess the individual, uh, often in their own home, often with family, and you'd provide a crisis intervention service to them. So that could be sort of uh, sort of rapid follow up uh, and, and yeah. support. Um, it could be w- one individual on that team, or it could be a number of you that would would support the individual. Um, and and, and I, I suppose I was just very attracted to crisis intervention. I was really quite pleased to get a get a, a job within the, the intervention services. And uh, I suppose it all came together because also uh, the social work department was was literally a- across the corridor from the psychology department oh. where David Winter worked. Um, oh right, I didn't know. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. And and so um, in the social work department, I, I knew about PCP, and I came to understand obviously that David was the eminent person in uh, yeah. in PCP. Um, and he he gave uh, a number of talks to interested others about it was about actually suicide prevention but PCP um, oh. and that's where I got introduced to the training um, right. in PCP um, and so actually I, I was in a very fortunate position which I, I sadly just does not exist now where as a social worker I could cl- practice clinically in terms of the crisis follow-up um, and I was being supervised by David across from the corridor um uh, and attending the training course uh, yeah. and so even in terms of the clinical hours and material that was within my work um so i was i was very fortunate really and i guess it was just a, a sense of a number of things coming together uh, mm. that allowed me to do that yeah um, yeah so, okay. so i so you were working in that that team and what was your role in there so i mean as part of a it, it, the role was multifaceted actually it was so I was a, an approved social worker uh, which is what's called now called an approved mental health practitioner and um so we we would have the, the it is the power uh, to bring people into hospital and to make the application for someone to be detained formally in hospital um, and that's been a thread throughout my career actually which I'll come back to um 
so there's that part but actually it was trying to I, I mean you're always trying to look at the least restrictive practice in, yeah. even in terms of being an approved uh, social worker or approved mental health practitioner you're trying to find an alternative to that restrictive hospital admission and so crisis intervention really sort of was in line with that um and I was in that really fortunate position where I could work with people over an extended period of time, even up to a year, um, in, in terms of, I suppose, providing su- certainly supportive psychotherapy, psychotherapy, but in the context of a multidisciplinary team. In looking yeah. back as a social worker, that was a real gift because I, I, I know it's not quite so easy now in no. terms of that. So I could have that statutory role, but also that, that psychotherapeutic role as well. Yeah, that's interesting. <clears throat> Yes. Very interesting. And I bet yeah. there's lots of people now who'd like that job. <laughs> well, yes. But although I must say that's what, there's a bit of a conflict in myself because the, the, it's, I mean, I think it, it, it definitely has to exist. It's really important the Mental Health Act is there and it's about uh, maintaining people's health and safety and the protection of others. But it, I really struggled with that sort of dissonance really about, you know, how that fitted with a credulous approach and, and thinking yeah. from a, 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 you know, with sociality, thinking from an individual's perspective. Because actually, as, a, as an approved uh, mental health practitioner, you've got to think about the wider context in terms of uh, the, that, that, that person's position in the wider society and the impacts it's having on that wider society as well, not just the individual. And I, yeah. I, I felt rather uncomfortable with that over time. And so I mm. found myself going much more to work towards the, the psychotherapy side. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to um, start working with the psychology department, actually, as a group therapist um, using PCP. Um, oh. and, that, and that was working with people with borderline personality disorder. And that okay. was just over 20 years ago I started doing that. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting, too. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I, Sorry, go on. Were you doing that? Who did you do it with in terms of facilitating? Yeah, so there's someone else called Sue Watson. Um, who's who's been very much in the in the PCP circle yeah. for, for some time, and so Sue and I did it for a couple of years uh, as right. joint therapists, and that was supervised um, by by the psychology department as well. Um, and, and it was all it was actually it was part of a contrast in terms of a, a personal construct approach to working with um, people who have a, di- a psychiatric diagnosis of borderline personality disorder compared to the dialectical behavioural therapy approach, DBT approach. Um, and it was contrasting those those two approaches. Okay, that's interesting. So, in terms of um, you in that role, you moved from it. What did you do next? Yes, yes. So, so about twenty years ago is when I qualified as a psychotherapist, and so I um, there's, I did a number of things. So, I started to work as a, a psychotherapist within the psychology department. Um, and that developed over time where I became the manager or one of the managers of psychological therapy services, uh, yeah. which, which was, um, yeah, about how, how therapy provision was, was offered to people with severe and enduring mental health difficulties. Um, and Very I was in that position. Yeah, I was in that position for uh, 10 years. Uh, and I did that part time. And I've always been a registered social worker. So I carried on. Actually, I stopped becoming being a local authority social worker yeah. um, again around the same time. Um, but I started working as an independent social worker. So oh, yeah. I, I ended up um, spending a lot of time in mental health review tribunals where the, the tribunal panel is making a decision about whether someone should continue to be detained or not. And I started to get instructions all over the country uh, in terms of uh, assessing people. Um, and I would pro- then provide a report um, and often go to the tribunal hearings as well. Um, so I carried on sort of part-time as that independent social worker and then I think it was three and a half days a week uh, in, in psychological therapy services um, yeah. really, really developing all the all the therapies including uh, evidence-based sort of uh, 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 therapies as well which, and, and but also PCP being part of that in terms of both group work uh, and individual work so it was, I was managing the, the waiting lists and initial yeah. assessments um, but 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 also providing therapy as well during that time. Yeah. Oh, interesting role. Yeah. No, it, it it was. I mean, it was. It was. I mean, I, all work is hard, <laughs> but it was hard uh, just in terms of sort of having those those two roles. So what, yeah. what, half the week I'm uh, working as an independent social worker um, and, and providing sort of a, as, and so working as an expert witness really and providing uh, professional opinion. 
yeah. uh, and then the other half working within the NHS and, and managing psychological therapies. Uh, but yeah, it, it was it was a great time um, and, and a really important time. Uh, and, and I suppose what's important to say is that PCP would run through all of that. So even my work as an independent social worker, it's it, even which I still do now. Um, it's it's absolutely fundamental to my assessments uh, with individuals who are obviously experiencing some form of, of, of mental distress. Um, and, yeah. and I suppose capturing their narrative, but also capturing the narratives uh, of the multidisciplinary teams, the families, uh, and, and that real sense that there is there is no one way of construing that individual's circumstances. And there are so many different perspectives. And then as mm. the independent uh, professional, I'm, I'm yet another sort of narrative within those narratives. Um, and it's trying to be, um, I suppose, slightly humble with that in terms of being able to consider all the different sort of uh, perspectives and, and using that idea of the, the credulous approach to yeah. assimilate that, but also being very aware that at some point I'm also, I stop being credulous and I put my own view into the pot as well, which can yeah. have quite an impact. And I suppose it's yeah. being aware of uh, aware aware and sensitive of that power. Mm. Yeah, it can be quite scary, can't it, when you're involved in those kind of things? Uh, and I, yes. I'm involved in you know making some diagnosis of autism. Um, uh, are you really? Yeah. When I first started doing that, I was terrified. <laughs> yeah. You know, because you're yeah. saying this is what I think it is, and it's in people's records. Um, so even if someone else changes their mind later, someone who hasn't got the full record may not see that that's been changed. It's a huge responsibility. No, it really is. I do a lot of work in the court of protection now. Um, so that, that, that's where uh, individuals who've got a learning disability or an acquired brain injury or, for example, yeah. dementia are, are, are considered to lack mental capacity. Uh, and then the court needs to make a best interest decision. Um, right. similar, to, similar to the Children's Act about, oh. for example, where they should live, what care and treatment they should have, um, uh, who they should have contact with. So in terms of for example, even sexual relationships, um, it's, not yeah. that, it's not a best, best interest decision, but assessing people's capacity around that as well. And yeah. PCP is so much for me at the heart of that. I suppose, again, like I was saying before, it's just, it's just being able to, to understand and construe and prejudice with all those different narratives and all the different I never get involved unless there's real dispute between all the parties. And so there's always yeah. uh, that sense of friction. And it's, it's about not taking a side as such, but trying yeah. to, 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 to be credulous enough to see all of those perspectives, but also being aware that at some point you're also making your own impact because you're, you're being cross-examined in the witness box and you're probably influencing the course of, and, the, and the flow of the proceedings and the decisions mm. that the, the, the judge ultimately makes. Um, and I, I, find, I find from a theoretical, well, I, find it, I find it fascinating from so many perspectives, but from a theoretical point of view, obviously there's the PCP and the social constructivist point of view, where actually you're, you're there to, to construe the construction processes of another. But in this setting of being in the witness box, where I'm the expert, I'm, I'm called the expert witness, I just find that a really interesting concept in terms of how that fits with a PCP approach. Because mm. can you have an yeah. expert in terms of PCP? Um, yeah. And I, I mean, I think, well, I've, I've come to the conclusion that in one sense you have, but you can do. But it's being, I suppose, it's, it's, being, it's always being able to change your views based on the information, based on the evidence, and, and, yeah. and, and not presenting that information with a sense of ego or, or sense of threat to your own profession. But really yes. trying to sort of cut through all of that to, to, to give, uh, to, to, I suppose, to articulate how you construe that person's circumstances yeah. and considering your, the range of convenience in terms of what you're being asked to do. Yes, yeah. So do, you, do the judges ask you anything about PCP? So uh, I'm, I'm very clear with all my reports that I do I mean I, I can't get away from it I have to formulate I have to make a very clear formulation yeah I can say this I think because uh, I am one but I think social workers don't do it very well in terms of formulations they, they their psychology colleagues do obviously the psych, psychiatry, psychiatry will formulate um, yeah. but social work really could do better I think with formulating because it's about being able to I, I, I think 
even in therapy, it, the client should be able to stop you at any point and say, why are you asking those questions? Why are we going down that particular pathway? And I'm, yeah. I, I'm a very, very firm believer that the clinician should be able to account for themselves at any point. And I think yeah. the court is almost a, a metaphorical place where that's exactly what's being done. Right. It's like, well, why, why are you making that decision? Why are you suggesting that this person, for example, should not live in the family home? And you're suggesting that, therefore, their human rights should be challenged. Well, actually, yeah. if you're going to suggest that, you've got to be able to sort of say why you're, you're, you're doing that and be able to account for yourself. And so there's that formulation. But I suppose there's a PCP formulation, which for me just meshes mm. in with all of the other parts of that formulation. To, to, so I can work out how I've got to that point of why I'm making the decisions I am. Yes. Or expressing the views that I am. And that's very much underpinned by a, a, a constructivist framework always. Mm. Um, and I, and I, I can never escape it now. Um, not that I try to, um, yeah. but it's, it's always there. I mean, I, I used to be petrified of going into the witness box. I would do anything to avoid it. Yeah. Uh, and after some amazing, it wasn't PCP training, but some amazing training around being an expert witness, um, he, he, I, I, I use PCP even just in terms of sitting in the witness box uh, and even approaching the witness box physically and how, how you oh, sit yeah. in it. And it's, it's almost that sense of how you position yourself, um, how you're engaging with the judge who's a decision maker and, and realizing yeah. that actually you're there to assist them uh, yeah. to make a decision and being very aware that everyone else has their roles. So the yeah. barristers, so sometimes you can be cross-examined by five barristers if there's really? five different parties, um, yeah, and and it, it, that, obviously like, that can be really intimidating. But I guess once again, it's trying to think. Well, actually, that's that's their job. They're they're the advocates mm. for their particular clients within this yeah. case. Um, but I'm trying to assist the court make a best interest decision for the person who doesn't have a voice because they've yeah. been considered to lack capacity. And I suppose PCP just allows me to almost to step back that that little bit more to have a bit more of an objective view on things rather than being caught up as if I'm up for examination, where mm. on one level you are, but on the other hand, you're not at all. You're just, you're there as a, uh, uh, almost an instrument of the court to assist a, a whole yeah. process. And I guess it's about being objective to see that. And PCP allows me that, that, that sort of a bit of more of a distance to, to be able to, to perceive that. I've been very lucky in my career. So I, 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 um, I've been a visiting lecturer at University of Hertfordshire for some yeah. time, and we do... I, I do a session which is joined up with the, the law department because um, they have a, a mock court at the university. It's, 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 it's a proper court. It's, it, it's all set out physically as a court. And so the law students come to cross-examine the, uh, the clinical psychology trainees. It's my favourite day of the year. As far as I'm concerned, it's all PCP. And I come from it from a therapeutic or psychotherapeutic perspective. Um, and so I, 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 I suppose it's a bit... I was going to say a bit naughty, really, but I, 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 I ask the universities to tell all the Deakin psych students to, to dress appropriately for court. And I say no more than that. And then we start the day by saying, well, how did you feel being asked to dress appropriately for court? And then yeah. all the construing comes out. Well, I don't want to be told what to do. Or it, it's, it's this English court system is so stuffy and it's so yeah. power driven. And, and yes, to all of that. But it's just it just I suppose that process of going through court. It just engages people so much. And then we have this sort of, it's just role play, uh, but in a very formal yeah. court setting. And I, and I have this discussion when you know, it's, it's far better to experience what it might feel like now rather than in the yeah. real situation where you're confronted with all of these things that you're confronted with now. And it's such a good experiential learning day, mm. um, but, but has that formality of, of court. And I suppose even the the various acts that people have to work within the care act yeah. the mental capacity act mental health act etc yeah that's a really a much better way to do that learning because it yes. makes it make sense doesn't it no it really does make sense and and and, and everyone will have a go at being a, a a witness a judge a barrister will change everyone's roles around um and, and and they'll have cases where actually there is no one obvious clear outcome or answer which is so much the case in mental mm. health uh and, and mental distress um and yeah it makes for a fascinating day oh that's very exciting <laughs> i think i'd like to go and watch <laughs> yeah yeah no i it's i i could do so much more of that training it's uh it's it's just it's just really good fun <laughs> yeah i <laughs> 
<laughs> it would be it's, useful to have that, you know, a, available within. Um, well, I work in a trust that's specifically mostly about mental health, and it would be great for our yes. clinicians to have that experience. Yeah, well, I mean, I do. Um, I, mean, I see a lot of clinicians in the witness box, um, and they they do struggle terribly because there's so it's, there's just it's just overwhelming, uh, and there's so yeah. much they're trying to construe. And I, there's definitely, um, I guess, using a PCP framework, but knowing where your lines of accountability are, is that there's definitely a way to sort of tread through that and be yeah. very aware of yourself. And 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 I think also in the witness stand is is that sense that. Um, I don't. It's this PCP, but it's about it's owning your narrative yeah. and to be able to demonstrate. Well, actually, no. I think it is PCP because you, I, one would do the same in therapy that that you you create a or co-create a formulation with the client. I think, and then that, and it's from there that you then plot the course of therapy and the experiments that come out of therapy. And I actually don't see my role as an independent social worker as being any different to that. It's that the, yeah. the forum and the range of convenience is slightly different, but other than that, it's the same thing really for me yeah yeah that's interesting and do you, so you're using pcp all of the time in your day-to-day -day work i would say so so for now now i've i i, I mean i only realized about a month ago i have a portfolio career which is it all sounds very grand but i didn't even know it was called that so now yeah. i do um I, I recently um, just got appointed onto to the mental health tribunal there's three three members so you have a psychiatrist um a judge and a, what's called a specialist lay member who's got experience in mental health. So I'm now a specialist lay member. Yeah. So I use so so we we all e e the three of us equally have have the the power invested to to make a decision whether someone should continue to be detained or whether they should be discharged. Yeah, and that's fascinating because before I used to be on the other side of the table in a mm. sense of giving evidence uh, as a as an outside independent expert. Yeah. Uh, so 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 that's one part of what I do. I provide um, supervision for psychotherapists. Yeah. I also provide supervision um, for social workers um, and also um, mental health practitioners in universities as well. Uh, it's ah. really interesting. Okay. Uh, and then I, I'm also a psychotherapist and I'll see people individually. I see couples as well. Yeah. And then for all the independent social work um, that I was talking about and the visiting lecturing as well. Yeah. Big portfolio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a fat one. <laughs> no, I, but I really like it, and, and I must say, it's, it's it sounds great, and and it and it is. Uh, but it's really hard because I mean, I, in the sense of, I don't know what I'm doing from week to week, and I find it really yeah. hard to, to to locate where I am. And I suppose actually, what runs through all of that is PCP, and mm. that's the thing that grounds me every time. Otherwise, I I actually wouldn't know where I was whether I was coming or going. I don't. Think. Right. And there's something about. Um, that that theoretical position that, that or that framework that that, that always sort of um, uh, gives me that sense of structure that I definitely need because if I didn't have that I think I it would just be everything would be just feel too diffuse really and I struggle yeah yeah, yeah. I mean I would agree with that absolutely but it it gives you a kind of thread that goes through your whole week that no, you know that whatever you'll be doing you'll be using that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 it's, it's got to that point now where it's just, it's just quite comforting, really. It's, it's, mm. it's not. I don't have to sit there and think, oh, PCP. What would that be? It's just, it just is there. Yeah. Um, in terms of a, a, a background, a framework, which I can then sort of, almost, almost. Uh, I know. I, I, I was going to say unconsciously, but that's probably not a very good, great PCP term. But I can almost unconsciously tap into that. Yeah. And it gives me that sense of place, really. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are there particular things that you find useful to use or to think with? Yeah. I, you know, I've, I've thought long and hard about this actually over the years. Um, and I've got to that point where I don't think, I, I mean, laddering and the ABC technique and uh, uh, grids, all really good stuff. And I, But I, I'm very clear in my thinking, uh, and I can only own, I can't say for anyone else, they, those are just tools for, yeah. for PCP. And and for me, where I always sort of go back to, and even even when um, uh, lecturing in terms of, sort of psychotherapy skills at, at uni, um, it's about that that whole notion of constructive alternativism, and it's that yeah. sense that that sense that there is a reality out there, but actually 
we only make approximations to it based on our own construing and our own experiences and that's what we've got to work with um and actually i think that's that's the most important part for me so i mean years ago i I had um there was a student from from university who came to a placement for, for her course and i know she was finding things really very difficult in terms of uh the course and the the, the hours etc i know she had that sort of sense of anxiety i really um in yeah. terms of uh getting it right and going through all the textbooks and, and even with pcp well I, I now need to do grids i now need to do laddering i now need to do pyramiding and it was almost in the sense that that was shrouding her from engaging with the individual and their narrative and it was almost yeah. it was that it was almost a eureka moment where we spoke about the whole thing of anxiety and trying to anticipate whether she could manage that to actually engage with that individual's narrative and then bring that yeah. the other more formalized sort of theoretical parts or techniques in behind that once she'd actually engaged with the client. And there was just such an incredible change in her whole perspective to, right. to working with clients and doing actually ending up doing something really useful with the clients she was working with. Um, yes. It was, was clearly oh, helpful for them. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so in, in terms of... Um, people coming to PCP who might be you know just beginning their PCP study or uh, you know learning most people will be learning for themselves these days um, so are there particular things that you think might be useful for them to either look at or to know about well I I would say um, and, and I keep coming back to it sort of over the years really I mean the work of Miller Mayer I, I just yeah. I adore it. It's um, I mean, it's feeling emotional actually. I, I just think the way he he um, articulates himself, and he's very he very much talks about narrative. Yeah, and he talks about that whole sense of how we're part of our our, our time and place. Yes, um, and that that sense of almost from one generation to another, we cannot help but have some of that that, that way of construing that is then part of us, and how that then yeah. goes on into the future as well. And there's something really sensitive about the, the way he writes, the way he, he sees um, individuals' construct worlds. Um, and, and for me, that just so fits with social work because it is about people's family, people's culture, people's lived experiences. Yeah. That's, you know, th- this whole thing about working with difference, we're always working with difference. Yeah. And for me, PCP really underlines that. It's like it doesn't matter what person's sitting in front of you. And even if you think they're similar to you, they look similar to me, they're from a similar culture, they're probably not because actually yeah. their narrative, by a definition, by a, a, a constructivist definition, has to be completely different. And it's yeah. about being able to engage with that. And, and I suppose ask, it's about asking those inquiring questions yeah. to elaborate that construct world, which you actually know nothing of. And I love the the humility of PCP, where actually we cannot ever know what it is to stand in someone's shoes until we've yeah. asked them. And even then, we can't really know, but we can get closer to it if yeah. we dare to have that dialogue with them and, and, and develop that rapport with them. Yeah. Um, so definitely the work of, of Miller Mayer. Um, I, I mean, Peggy Dalton and, and, and uh, her book, A Psychology for Living, but I mean, I've got a real yeah. affection for Peggy. I think most people who knew her yes, did yes, love Peggy. And I love that book. I think it's accessible, isn't it? Oh, so accessible. So that's, yeah, by, by uh, yeah, Peggy Dalton and Gavin Dunnett. It's yeah. a really good book. Um, and it just, yeah, it just makes PCP so accessible. I mean, Peggy was a speech and language therapist, but it doesn't matter what profession you are. Yeah. It, it's just about using, or just tapping into people's narratives. But certainly Miller Mayer, I find really useful. I find self I mean, this is a tool, I guess, but it's the idea of self characterization. Yeah. I find really useful. So, whilst PCP talks about very much about elaborating the complaint, um, there's also something about self characterization is about, well, if, you, if life wasn't with that complaint, what could life possibly look like? And there's yes. that sense of it, of a self characterization just allows the client and the therapist to articulate a possible world that the client might dare to step in or might choose yeah. not to step in but they're making an active choice with that there's something something about the movement that a self-capitalization sort of uh, stimulates yeah. really in terms of 
construing ourselves as, as if we didn't have that issue or yeah. or trying to even plot a course out of the, the hole that we might feel like we're in. Yeah. It's just a way a way of, of of doing that really quite succinctly, I think. Yeah, that's interesting because I find, you know, the um, the flexibility of PCP, and that's really what you've been talking about, isn't it? That you know you can use different things from PCP at different moments in different roles yeah. that you'll have, Absolutely. and it will work. Absolutely. I mean, I must say, it's. it's uh, I have nothing against CBT. I think CBT is great. If it, if it works for an individual, then absolutely they should be doing it. Um, but, but I think it's, it's very clear when someone's doing CBT and maybe because it, it's, it's underpinned by uh, particular approaches that, that will be used and very clear formulations. Whereas if you ask a PCP practitioner, well, what does PCP look like? How do, you, how do I know if I'm watching what you're doing that it's yeah. PCP? And, and I guess in a difficult way, I don't have an answer for that because it's really mm. hard to say, well, actually, now they're doing PCP. Yeah. I mean, you could be doing laddering, but that doesn't mean yeah. I don't think that means you're doing PCP. And I think it's right back once again to that very those very fundamental principles um, in in terms of constructive alternativism, and that you're working with that individual's construct world, and you're you're suspending as much as you can your own way of construing, other yeah. than viewing them through the professional constructs. Um, yeah. And I guess that's that's PCP. But then. After you, after you once said that, it's so broad in terms of yeah. how you might go about it. And I know one therapist will be so different to another in terms of their approach, but still it will be PCP. Yes, yeah. And I, I think sometimes it can almost look like you aren't doing anything because it, it's not obvious to the client, hopefully, or to the, if you're doing supervision, what approach you're using. Yeah. What you're trying yeah. to have is a conversation and a discussion that makes sense and moves yeah. sensibly from thing yeah. to thing rather than jumps around. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. So I think that whole like, notion of experimenting in PCP, um, I think I think if someone was on the outside looking in, they would think, what on earth are you doing? Yeah. Um, because there's, it, it, what I really like about PCP and where it does differ from CBT, it, it, it's not there. You don't have a bag of tools. And so it's about being yeah. able to, Sit in, in the therapist's chair and, and allowing the client to sit in their in their position and working with what comes out or, and it's quite organic in that sense. Yeah. And then it's from that that you start to, with the client, design the experiments that may allow them to to reconstrue or try different constructs on for size. But the experiments themselves can look almost bizarre. I think. I mean, I mm-hmm. I, I I can remember one person I was working with. He. he his, his experiments was to buy particular airfix models and make them and go to the Imperial War Museum. And it's like, why would you do that? But actually for him, I mean, I won't go into the details, but for him, most difficult thing in the world, because what it, in, it meant for him in terms of doing something he was interested in, taking time for himself um, and believing that, that, that he, he could develop an interest um, was just so threatening. And yeah. he was finding something that he could potentially do. Um, that he could experiment with um, yeah yeah so I, I just think that that's very that's yeah. really fascinating in terms of how clients makes or how clients and therapists may experiment with with trying on new constructs yes yeah and those experiments have to be their experiments uh, absolutely maybe the difference between CBT you know one of the things that CBT will have is a range of potential experiments so if you're washing your hands too much you know you have to try not to and see what that's like etc yeah. but we I mean, might we might work out a completely different kind of experiment that still addresses the issue yeah absolutely i think the client has to own the experiment more than the therapist mm. and the client has to see more sense in the experiment than the therapist well well so i guess as a therapist you want to say it's altruistic but it's not because we have our own needs as well and actually when you see a client that starts to move with their experiment and then brings back other experiments i had one client yeah. recently who was um i think by dropbox send, sending me the artwork she was doing we never spoke about her doing artwork but she was drawing constructs of her before her how she'd like to be yeah i mean and, and i mean she, some really significant trauma in the past that she she'd had but how she was literally daring to draw what a, a painting of what her life would be if, if she didn't have, uh, or if she wasn't sort of bound by those constructs from the past, yeah. and what she would, how life might be if she was to sort of allow herself to reconstruct, whilst not forgetting her past, her childhood, who she was as a child, 
and trying to deny that person. It was yeah. about her developing compassion towards herself when she was yeah. younger and forgiveness, I suppose, for, from her perspective. But to see those represented in, in, in pictures, we, we never spoke about that, but those were her experiments on top of the experiments we'd already talked about yeah. was was an incredible thing really and was it was 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 the end of therapy in a sense because yeah. it, it's and I think there's that sense which doesn't always happen where the clients all starts to tell you the theory back to you from their perspective and that's when I know perhaps we've, we've gone as far as we can go because you yeah. now own you own a process of change it's not me yeah. that's trying to to facilitate that and that's where we stop because actually you've got a lifetime to experiment in and yeah. I need to come out of that picture. Oh, that's an interesting way to explain that. That's very helpful. So, it, so if people are thinking they might like a PCP supervisor, can they contact you? I can put your website details in the Of course, uh, absolutely. Notes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Do they need to be a social worker? Uh, no, no, no. So I, I um, no. Uh, I see social workers, uh, psychologists, uh, um, uh, speech and language therapists. I'll, I'll, I'll work with anyone. I, I mean, I think it's really, really important that there's that, that initial um, experience in terms of mental health and, and, yeah. and, and, and professional qualification. But I'd be very happy to work with anyone in terms of sort of working with a, a personal construct perspective and how they might work with that, work that into their practice. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's helpful then. So I can put your website information on their show notes. Absolutely. So can get in touch if they're interested. Yes. And if they are a social worker and they're thinking, okay, I'd like to extend my PCP knowledge. Um, is there anything available specifically for social workers? Anything they could do, or maybe they get in touch with you. Yeah. I mean. I'd like to say there is all these things you can access. Um, I mean, and I know, I know uh, the, the PCPA, the Personal Construct Psychology Association, is is looking at, at providing the training courses. Yeah. Um, but I think, um, I mean, PCP it shouldn't be, but it just always feels quite niche. Um, and so, I mean, I think the the the, the, first, the starting point really are to familiarize some oneself with some of the texts in terms of uh, psychology for living yeah. um inquiring men by faye francella yeah. is a great one as well um i mean there's obviously kelly's volumes and david winter's uh tone yeah. um which are it's all great stuff but i think to start off maybe yeah. sort of peggy's book is, is, is a good one and faye francella's um yeah and and i suppose engaging with supervision yeah um and, and and i suppose thinking about how how that that individual can sort of demonstrate their own experiential learning with with yeah. pcp because like i was saying earlier on it's all very well reading it in various sort of academic and, and and textbooks but actually true pcp is it's as it is for a client the same is for us it's it's got to be experiential yeah um, and that's the only way we're going to make sense of it um, yeah that, and that doesn't mean throwing away the books but but that the books are in parallel, but it's our experience and it's our ourselves daring to engage much more in the theory and, and thinking about how that might look in practice. Yeah. Um, that, that I suppose becomes PCP. Yeah. OK. That's extremely helpful. All right. Good. Really useful so. to people who are social workers in particular. But I think it will be very interesting for people who aren't who don't know yeah. about this kind of role that people can take with people and also yes. have to use PCP in it. Yes, yes. No, and I, and I think, again, being being one, I can say this, and I think social work is always, it's certainly in, in multidisciplinary teams, is always the poor, we're always the poor relation. I know I'm generalising, but it's, it's almost like we're not confident enough as a profession to sort of pick, pin our colours to the mast and say this is, this is where, where, why we're taking this particular perspective. Yeah. I think it's really important that, the social workers of any generation, and I know I'm a particular generation, social workers of any generation uh, are, are, are able to be, um, I guess, fairly forthright, really, uh, in yeah. their views. Uh, but, 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 not, but not that it comes from the gut. Um, yeah. I always get a bit concerned when people say, well, it's a gut feeling. Actually, it should come from somewhere. And you should be able to qualify where it comes from and how you formulated that position and why you're taking that particular line and that particular path. Uh, yeah. And social work, like any profession is not exempt from that. A PCP practitioner is not exempt from that. Yeah. 
Um, And and I think social work generally, it's just really important that they're able to, or as a profession, we're we're able to account for ourselves fully uh, in terms of what we do. Um, And and showcase is is too much of egotist, being too much egotistical, uh, but but being able to sort of demonstrate um, what we consider is good practice um, and being confident in that in terms of um, putting that out there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. So that's been fantastic. Very, very helpful. You're welcome. Thank you, Ian. Thank you for asking me. I hope that was interesting for you. I think what Ian demonstrates is the importance of linking back into the theory. And that's another thing that I'm trying to do with the podcast is to present little snippets of the theory so that people can gradually get used to some of the terms. And also uh, hear about some of the ways that people use PCP that's reported in research. So next month's podcast will be a look at a paper or a chapter. Uh, And remember to have a look at the Coventry Constructivist Centre's uh, study days, because there's one coming up which is about the community of selves. If you're interested in that, that'd be a really useful one to attend. And we've got the programme out now for the rest of the year. So if you go to the website, which is covpcp.com you will find the details on there of all the study days and at the moment they're all on zoom so hopefully that makes it very accessible for people and i'll see you next month thanks bye Mm -hmm.